Good morning, everybody. Nobody told you before, but please, all of you, I need you to help me so it will be successful. Raise your left hand. Hi, please, hi. Everybody, stick it in your left pocket. Switch off this bloody iPhone, okay? I hate people doing iPhone when I'm talking. So first of all, thank you very much. I've seen that we've got here a Chinese delegation. So I thought to give my presentation in Chinese, but my Chinese is mama hoo hoo. So, so I'll have to stick to English and cover it. I really wanted to have more time so I'll be able to cover the problem statement and enlighten you with great uh, technology. But as I'm limited to some 30 minutes, I'll mainly speak about the problem statement. So let me start first of all, and normally it's like this. Oh, yeah. If we are looking at the state of Israel, and by the way, it's the same for many other countries, we are facing three major issues. First of all, economy. We need to be in the leading edge of the economy. There's huge competition in the world. We know the economy situation around the world, and we definitely we need to keep moving forward. It's not a secret that we are surrounded by some countries that don't necessarily like us, and definitely we need to make sure that we are strong from a security point of view, and we need to advance it as well. Let it be security, missile, or cyber. And the third problem, which is a huge problem in Israel and in many other countries, is the socioeconomic gap between the people that have and the people that do not have. And the frightening thing is that when you go down, you see it already in second generation and third generation of poverty, and definitely a democratic country that strives to move forward cannot afford it. So the three issues, economy, security, and socioeconomic gap, the only way to move forward and bridge it is simply by trying to invest in education. Good student will advance an economy, good student that will go to the army will improve our security, and good students, especially if we we'll focus on this challenge socioeconomic level, will be able to take them out of the poverty and put them where they're supposed to be to give them the chance to compete in the world. And that's the reason that once I left the high tech, or not didn't leave, I'm still there, but once I retired from Intel, I decided to put my effort over there. So let's try to understand what you challenge. Your challenge is crazy. You get a child at the sixth grade to school, and actually you need to be able to train him so he will be successful when he'll go to work. This poor child is going to be in the world in 2035. Now, what the hell are you supposed to educate him? I do not know what he's going to need in 235. One thing I'm sure, confident, that what you are teaching him right now probably will not be relevant at all. So what are we supposed to teach these kids to be competitive 20 years from now? I believe that's the challenge that you, the high tech community, the ed tech community are facing. How do we make sure that our kids, the next generation, will be competitive? And that's what I'll try to answer in the coming few minutes. To advance our economy. We use technology to advance our security. We use technology to advance our health. We use the tipping edge, a spitz of the technology in order to advance our standard of living. But guys, we are not using technology to advance our education. And I believe this will be the challenge of the coming two, year, two days, not to define the problem, but really to dive into the solution space, argue the different technology, argue the different mechanism, and really bring to our kids tools that will make them competitive 25 years from now. Thank you very much, and have a great conference.